Good morning, students. Uh, myself, Vijay Shankar, from EC Department, Chevrolet Engineering College. Today, we are going to discuss about the some more properties in the Laplace transformation. We already discussed uh, four properties in the Laplace transformation in the last class. Those four properties are the linearity property. Linearity property. Second one is a shifting theorem or translation in time domain. And third property, complex translation of uh, R, translation in frequency domain, uh, frequency shift property. And fourth one is a differentiation theorem or the differentiation in uh, time domain. And what is the uh, importance in their differentiation in time domain means uh, Laplace transformation, there is a bidirectional Laplace transformation is there and the unilateral Laplace transformation. For bilateral transformation and unilateral transformation, all the properties is similar except uh, differentiation in time domain is only the different property in the unilateral. For bilateral and the unilateral, all the properties are similar except the differentiation theorem. What is the difference here? X of S is equal to X of S is equal to S into S into X of S minus X of zero minus is a D by DT of X of T the unilateral Laplace transformation. For bilateral Laplace transformation, the d by dt of uh, x of t, the derivative of the time domain function for bilateral Laplace transformation is s into x of s of. Since uh, for unilateral, the limitations is from the 0 minus to the x of t, e power minus s t dt, the definition of a unilateral Laplace transformation x of s is equal to is unilateral Laplace transformation. For bilateral Laplace transformation, the x of s uh, varies from the minus infinity to infinity. So minus infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity bilateral or two-sided Laplace transformation. It is a single-sided Laplace transformation. x of t e power minus s t d. Here the zero minus is nothing but uh, just below the zero and zero plus is uh, just above the zero. Actually, is both are equal to the zero. Nothing is a difference, my dear students. The representation of the zero minus is uh, just below the zero. These are only the difference. Uh, so the properties uh, for unilateral and the bilateral Laplace transformation is differentiation theorem or the differentiation in time domain okay and these also we already discussed in the last class so before the uh, before the class following my students and coming to the next property integration property the integration property also we discussed in the last class, the integration zero minus to the t f of t dt is equal to f s by s. f s by the s. The input, if you can take, uh, apply the Laplace transformation for the integral of a zero minus to the t f of t dt is equal to f s by the s. This is the integration. Always we can we know the d by dt derivative. Whenever you can apply any derivative, you can take it as a multiplication only multiplication the laplace transformation of the derivative is s into x of s the frequency is multiplied with the s now the integral 0 minus to the t here the t minus students not the infinite t value x of t dt x of t dt the laplace transformation is uh, the derivative x of t is uh, s into x of s Laplace transformation for the integration of the time domain function 
in frequency the 1 by s into x of s. 1 by s into x of s. If it is a nth derivative, nth derivative dt power d power n dt power n is a x power n. Okay. And if this is an integral with a 0 to t1, t2, and the last is a tn, you can apply the tn times the integral, it becomes of a x of s by the s power n. x of s by the s power n. Up to this, uh, in the last class, we already discussed the five properties. Uh, one is linearity property, linearity property, and second one is a time shift property, a translation in time, time shift or translation in time, and complex uh, function or it is a frequency shift, translation in frequency, frequency shift, third property, and fourth property is a differentiation or differentiation theorem, differentiation in time domain, and fifth property is the integration theorem. Integration theorem. Okay, my dear students. These are the five we discussed in the last class. Only there is a difference uh, for the fourth property of uh, bilateral and the unilateral. Okay, my dear students. Now you go for the sixth one. Differentiation by the yes. We already seen that, we already discussed about the differentiation in time domain. Now it is a differentiation in the S domain. Nothing but it's a frequency domain. Let the Fourier transformation of, not the Fourier, sorry, Laplace transformation of f of t is f of s. Then the differentiation in complex frequency domain, differentiation in complex frequency domain corresponds to the multiplication by the t in time domain corresponds to the multiplication in the t for the time domain. You can multiply the t in the time domain. There is a differentiation of course in the frequency domain. Now let us see. The differentiation in s domain, sixth property. Differentiation. by the S or in S domain, we can call it as S domain or the frequency domain also. Frequency domain. What is the statement here? The statement saying that uh, the D by the DS of X of S in the frequency the Laplace transformation for this one is a t into x of t. For the t into x of t, you can apply the Laplace transformation. We'll get the differentiation in the frequency domain, nothing but the s domain. Let me go over the proof. According to the definition of the Laplace transformation, x of s is equal to integral minus infinite infinite x of t e power minus st into d. For Fourier transformation and the Laplace transformation, here only the difference is instead of s, there is a j omega is there. Instead of s, there is a j omega. The shortcut notation of j omega x of j omega is equal to x of omega. That is also the x of s, simple. Wherever the j omega is there, you can substitute the s. It becomes to the Laplace transformation only. It becomes to the Laplace transformation. Following my students. Now, what they're asking here, the differentiation in the s domain. So apply the differentiation on both sides with respect to the s. Yes, with respect to the s into x of s is equal to here the s term is only for the exponential value. The banning is a constant term. e power minus integral minus infinite to infinite x of t. Take the differentiation with respect to the x for e power minus s t dt for this function only. 
and d by ds of uh, x of s is equal to integral minus infinite infinite x of t. Now, what is the derivative of this one? Applying the with respect to the with respect to the yes d by dt of e power minus s t into the s coefficient is a minus t. S coefficient is a minus t. Okay, into dt. So applying the derivative with respect to the s for the frequency s terms and e power minus s t with respect to the s, the s coefficient is the t. That is a minus. T. So d by ds of x of s is equal to integral minus infinite to infinite. Now I am writing the t into x of t as a minus also. t into x of t e power minus s t dt. Now I can see here for x of t apply the Laplace transformation will get the x of s. Similarly, you can apply the Laplace transformation of the t into x of t. Therefore, the t into x of t, the Laplace transformation is uh, d by ds of uh, x of s is a pair. Laplace transformation pairs t into x of t, the d by ds of uh, x of s, the frequency term. So here, for the Laplace transformation of uh, t into f of t, the minus d by ds of f of s, we're taking the minus here itself, minus d by ds of f of s. By the definition of the Laplace transformation, f of s is equal to, we are taking here the by unilateral, my students, don't confuse. Zero minus to the infinite uh, f of t power minus s t dt. I explain in terms of the x, here they explain in terms of the f, f of t and f of s. d by ds of f of s is equal to integral 0 minus to infinite f of t d by ds of e power minus s t dt. Okay. Then apply the derivative for the e power minus s t, e power minus s t into minus t. So minus the Laplace transformation of the t into f of t. So we got it is a Laplace transformation of a t into minus t into x of t. Okay, my dear students. Now coming to the seventh one, initial value theorem. It is a very, very important uh, theorem. It is initial value theorem. In this initial value theorem, we are using the unilateral only. Now, whatever here, they are representing the integral 0 to minus, 0 minus to the infinite. For initial value theorem, we have to must and should, we have to use the unilateral Laplace transformation only to prove the initial value theorem. Don't use the bidirectional or bilateral Laplace transformation. So what is the statement saying the initial value theorem it is a limit, uh, not the limit, uh, Laplace transformation of f of t is equal to f of s. Then the initial value of f of t is given as initial value of f of t. What is that initial value? I'm assuming the f of a zero plus. Zero plus is the initial value. You know, what is a zero plus means? Zero plus is the just above the, just above the zero. Zero and zero plus and zero minus. Just below the zero is a zero minus. Just above the zero is a zero plus. So f of zero plus is equal to limit t tends to 0 plus f of t, that is equal to limit s tends to infinite. So initial value, it starts from the time domain is a 0 plus and s domain is end with the infinite. So initial value, 0 plus in the time domain and in the s domain, s tends to infinite, s into f of s. I have to prove the Limit t tends to 0 plus f of t is equal to limit s tends to infinite s into f of s. Okay. 
provide that the first derivative of f of t should be the laplace transform mobile we know that the laplace transformation of the d by dt of f of t is equal to s into f of s minus f of 0 minus by the definition of a unilateral laplace transformation or one of the property the differentiation in time domain differentiation in the time domain my dear students so now on both sides on both sides if i am taking the limit extends to infinite limit extends to infinite on both sides limit extends to infinite the laplace transformation of d by dt of f of t is equal to limit extends to infinite uh, the total function is s into f of s minus f of 0 minus consider the laplace transformation of the above equation that is a uh, lhs here consider the lhs of the above equation lhs is limit extends to infinite what is the laplace transformation of the d by dt of f of t according to the definition of unilateral laplace transformation the zero minus to infinite what is the f of here this x of t signal is d by dt of f of t e power minus uh, st into d so actually x of s is equal to integral minus infinite to infinite x of t e power minus st dt the laplace transformation for unilateral laplace transformation is integral 0 minus to infinite x of t e power minus st d i need uh, the x of t the laplace transformation of the derivative of the signal so x of s is equal to integral 0 minus uh, the laplace transformation is a d by dt of x of t d by dt of x of t e power minus is t d so this is nothing but the laplace transformation of uh, d by dt of x of t only or otherwise it is equal to the x of s okay so I substitute the d by dt of f of t e power minus st dt by the definition of Laplace transformation. Okay, when we can substitute uh, limit extends to zero, limit extends to zero infinite here e power infinite. What is the e power infinite, my dear students? In this function, the total function e power infinite is a zero. You know the e power infinite always is a zero. E power zero is a one. So, and I'm taking here the limit extends to infinite uh, e power minus infinite into t. Substituting the s value as infinite, it becomes of the zero. So, LHS is equal to zero. Now, you can substitute this zero value in this uh, Laplace transformation of the d by dt of f of t is a zero that is equal to limit extends to infinite uh, s into f of s minus f of zero minus okay and in the second function there is no any s terms in the second term there is no any f s terms so you can bring that into the lhs value towards the left side okay the minus becomes is a plus f of zero minus is equal to limit distance to infinite s into f of s now here they are explaining that f of zero minus indicates the value of f of t just before the t is equal to zero and f of 0 plus indicates the value of f of t just after the t is equal to 0. If the function is continuous at t is equal to 0, then its value just before and just after t is equal to will be the same. Okay, my dear students, so remember this one. f of 0 minus indicates the value of f of t just before the t is equal to 0. And f of 0 plus indicates the value of f of t just after the t is equal to 0. If the function f of t is continuous at t is equal to 0, then its value just before and just after t is equal to 0 will be same. So, first f of 0 minus, I am taking the f of 0 plus. So both are equal. f of 0 plus is equal to f of 0 minus for f of t is a continuous at t is equal to 0. Okay. Now replace the f of 0 minus f of 0 minus as f of 0 plus 
is equal to limit s tends to infinite s into f of s. This equation is used to determine the initial value of f of t and its derivative. <coughs> initial value of f of t and its derivative. Got it, my students? It is very important. Then coming to the eighth property, the final value theorem. See, in the final value theorem, initial value theorem it starts in the time domain is a t is equal to zero plus, and in the frequency domain is a s tends to infinite. Now the final value theorem is a reverse. The limitations is for limit t tends to infinite f of t is equal to limit s tends to zero s into f of s. What did my students say? Initial value theorem. Initial value theorem is f of zero plus or limit t tends to zero plus f of t is equal to limit s tends to infinite s into f of s. Now final value theorem. Final value theorem. The statement is saying that f of t is a limit t tends to infinite. Here it is a zero to infinite initially initial value theorem. Final value theorem starts at the time domain is infinite is equal to limit <coughs> s tends to zero s into f of s. What did my students? Now you have to prove that limit uh, t tends to infinite f of t. Again, here also you can use uh, one of the property that is nothing but a differentiation property. That differentiation property for unilateral. For unilateral only, there is an addition factor. We have minus f of zero minus. Otherwise, uh, bilateral is only for s into f of s only. Okay. Now taking the same equation, the Laplace transformation of d by dt of f of t is equal to s into f of s minus f of zero minus. Now take the both sides, uh, limit uh, s tends to zero, limit s tends to zero. It is also limit s tends to zero, my students. This is a limit s tends to zero and this one is also limit uh, s tends to zero only. There is a wrong is occurred here. User take the limit of the above equation s tends to zero on both sides, both sides of this equation. So limit s tends to zero, the Laplace transformation of the d by dt of of t is equal to limit s tends to zero of total function s into f of s minus f of zero minus. That is equal to limit s tends to zero s into f of s minus, uh, and there is no any f term here, s terms. Take the LHS. Uh, what we did in the same initial value theorem. You take the limit s tends to zero, the Laplace transformation of d by dt of f of t. That d by dt of f of t using the definition of Laplace transformation, integral zero minus to infinite, that Laplace transformation is a unilateral only, my students. d by dt of f of t e power minus s t dt. Now, here there is a s tends to zero. Here there is a s tends to zero. Now you can substitute s tends to zero in this equation. e power minus zero, e power minus zero is a one. So integral zero, zero minus two infinite d by dt of f of t dt. Derivative of integral, simply the constant of f of t. With upper limit is infinite and lower limit is a zero minus. Okay. And limit s tends to, not the limit, here you can observe here the f of t is upper limit is uh, infinite and lower limit is uh, zero minus. Now I'm substituting the values uh, these alpha infinite and zero minus is a uh, t values. So f of infinite minus f of zero minus. What it matters to is LHS. What is RHS we have? RHS is a uh, limit s tends to zero. Limit s tends to zero s into f of s minus f of zero minus okay now implies 
I am taking this as f of t signal. So f of infinite, let us put it as f of t minus f of 0 minus is equal to limit s tends to 0, s into f of s. And here there is a s, I am taking the limitations. In the second term, there is no any s terms. No need of using the limit s tends to 0 because there is no any s terms. So directly you can write as f of 0 minus. In the left hand side, we have the minus f of 0 minus. And right hand side is also f of minus, uh, f of 0 minus is there, you can get cancelled. Implies uh, f of infinite is equal to the limit uh, s tends to 0, s into f of s. Now I am writing in the LHS, uh, limit t tends to infinite. Limit t tends to infinite, f of t, because I am substituting the t as infinite here is equal to limit s tends to 0, s into f of s, got it minus 1. Why is I am taking here the limit t tends to infinite, f of t minus f of 0 minus, okay. So there is no any s term, uh, t terms here. So it get cancel of a minus f of 0 minus and minus f of 0 minus. And finally the limit t tends to infinite f of t is equal to limit s tends to 0 s into f of s. The final value theorem is useful in analysis of uh, analysis and design of the feedback control system. Following my students. So only you have to remember the initial value and the final value is it starts from the is f of t plus 0 means limit uh, t tends to 0 plus f of t. Okay. So initial value theorem and the final value theorem. Initial value theorem is in the time domain is a limit 0 plus in the frequency domain s tends to infinite. And final value the initial value theorem it is. And final value theorem is so here the time domain is infinite and frequency domain is a 0. The remaining both the same. F of t and the s into f of s. And these two theorems, initial value theorem and the final value theorem, we can use to prove these equations uh, by using the one of the property, differentiation theorem, that to unilateral Laplace transformation. Okay, don't use the bilateral Laplace transformation theorem. Understood? Now the last 10th property here, the 10th before that, 10th, uh, actually 7, 8, 9, and it is a 10th property only, my students, not the 10th, it is a 9th property. This is a 9th, my dear students. Okay. Convolution theorem. Convolution theorem. So what is a convolution theorem? We already know in the Fourier transformation also. If the time domain is a convolution, the frequency domain is a multiplication in the Fourier transformation and the Fourier series also. Here also we can take the two signals, F1 of t and the F2 of t, convolute both the signals, then apply the Laplace transformation in the frequency domain is a product. So if F1 of t is a Laplace transformation of F1 of, F1 of s is the Laplace transformation of F1 of t, F2 of s is a Laplace transformation of F2 of t, then the Laplace transformation of F1 of t convolute with the F2 of t is equal to F1 of s and the F2 of s. F1 of s and the F2 of s. Put it, my dear students. So now, using convolution definition, that convolution definition is integral minus infinite infinite f1 of t f1 of t f1 of tau and the f2 of t minus tau d tau. Here yet they are taking that is f1 is a t minus tau and f2 is a tau. I think is a difference. I will explain here. So. Ninth property. Convolution theorem. A convolution in time domain. Time domain 
in laplace transformation okay the statement saying that uh, if let us take i'm taking the x values x1 of t with convolute with the x2 of t laplace transformation x1 of s product of uh, x2 of s this is a statement you have to prove for the convolution in time domain proof so on the definition of the laplace transformation the laplace transformation of uh, x of t is equal to integral minus infinity infinite i'll take the minus infinity infinite means bilateral laplace transformation x of t e power minus s t d okay what is x of t i'm using the laplace transformation of uh, x1 of t with the convolution of uh, x2 of t is equal to integral minus infinity infinite x1 of t with the convolution of uh, x2 of t e power minus s t d okay now use the definition of the convolution apply here is equal to integral minus infinity infinite within the bracket uh, the definition of convolution integral integral minus infinity infinite x1 of tau x2 of uh, t minus tau d tau into e power minus s t d okay i apply the definition of the convolution here x1 of tau x2 of t minus tau d tau got it is equal to is equal to i am using the e power minus infinity infinite x1 of tau d tau and integral minus infinity infinite x2 of uh, t minus tau t minus tau e power minus s t dt now see this is a second property according to the second property time shift property is a, a translation in time domain translation in time domain here it is uh, delayed with the tau samples it is delayed with the tau samples sir in this equation that is equal to integral minus infinity infinite x1 of tau d tau i am using the translation in time domain or the time domain property it gives that e power minus es into the t is tau here e power minus s tau e power minus s tau x of s actually it is x2 so it is x2 of s what it my dear students you got the definition of a uh, second property t minus tau or otherwise uh, you can substitute the t minus tau is equal to p dt is equal to dp and the t is equal to you can use the value directly you get the e power minus s tau into x2 of s only again you can see the integral minus infinity infinite x1 of tau e power minus s tau d tau into x2 of s so now see this is also one of the definition of the laplace transformation only but the signal is x1 with respect to the tau that is equal to x1 of s into x2 of s therefore the laplace transformation of uh, x1 of t with the convolution of uh, x2 of t is equal to x1 of s into x2 of s what it matters 
convolution in time domain, product in the frequency domain. Convolution in frequency domain, product in the product in the time domain. That is nothing but a modulation theorem. Is a convolution theorem. Frequency domain is a convolution. The time domain is a product. But it minus is a ninth one. So it's the same we got here also. CF2 of T and the F1 of S and the F2 of S. The two functions uh, 0 to infinite they are taking as a unilateral F2 of tau. E power minus S tau d tau is F2 of S and F1 of uh, X E power minus S into X D of X is equal to F1 of S. What it matters friends? Totally the nine properties we discussed in the Laplace transformation. Okay. Now you can write this is also one of the assignment, my dear students. Uh, in the second assignment, you can take it as because it is in the fourth unit, uh, <coughs> second mid syllabus. Write this also the assignment, the nine properties totally. What are the nine properties? Once again, you can go for go through that one. The first property saying <coughs> linearity property. In second property saying that shifting theorem or the translation in time domain. And third property, complex translation of the translation frequency domain. And fourth property, differentiation theorem of the differentiation in time domain. And fifth property, the integration theorem. Sixth is the differentiation by S or differentiation in the S domain. And seventh property is the initial value theorem. It is very important and you have to use the bilateral Laplace transformation for the derivative of a derivative in time domain signal to prove the initial value and also the final value. So seventh and eighth is the initial and the final values theorem. And ninth one is a convolution theorem. Ninth one is a convolution theorem, my dear students. Okay. Now you go for the sum of the examples in the Laplace transformation. Sum of the examples in the Laplace transformation. Find out the Laplace transformation of uh, an exponential function of an exponential function which is given as which is given as f of t is equal to e power e t. The above function can also be written as e power e t mu of t to indicate that e power e t exists only for t is greater than or equal to 0. Since mu of t is equal to 1 for t is greater than or equal to 0. So the given signal is f of t is e power e t mu of t. e power e t mu of t. Okay, you have to find out uh, e power e t mu of t of the Laplace transformation. According to the definition of the Laplace transformation, x of s is equal to integral minus infinite to infinite x of t x of t e power minus s t dt. We know this one. What is the given x of t? Here is f of t, my dear students. I am using the x. Don't confuse there. So because in some textbooks, they are always using the x values only. Okay. Integral minus infinite to infinite. I'm taking the x of t is e power a t mu of t. e power a t mu of t. e power minus s t d t. And is equal to integral that mu of t can change the value is 1. And the limitations is also changes from 0 to infinite. Or 0 minus to infinite. 0 minus is just below the 0. Or always is a just I'll, you can take the zero only there is no any difference for the zero minus zero plus and the zero in evaluation of this to solve the some problems we have to take only the zero plus and the zero minus is both are is a zero only. okay so e power a t e power minus st dt 
because the mu of t is equal to 1 there. So e power e a t, take, take the common of the e power minus uh, e s minus e a into t, so b t, that is integral 0 to infinity. And take the minus here, e s is a minus and the minus into minus is a plus. Apply the integral for the exponential value. That is e power minus of s minus a into t. Will divide by the minus of s minus a. The upper limit is infinite and the lower limit is a zero. When I have substitute the upper limit is infinite, it becomes of a one minus not the one minus two is a zero. Zero minus lower limit is a zero means the t values. 1 and 4 divided by we have the s minus a of minus s minus the minus and minus get cancelled becomes of 1 by s minus a this is for the laplace transformation of a e power a t mu of t e power a t mu of t got it so here also we got the same thing the laplace transformation of e power a t into mu of t is there 1 by s minus a. In Fourier transformation, we got it is a e power minus a t, e power minus a t mu of t is 1 by a plus j omega and a minus j omega. See that j, j, a minus j omega and a plus j omega for a, e power a t mu of t. The Laplace transformation is 1 by a minus j omega. The j omega is nothing but s here. Okay, yes, but 1 by s minus a and 1 minus s plus, s plus a like that, got it. We come to the next example. See, before going to the next example, you can see for s is less than a, the Laplace transform cannot be calculated. See, s minus a. So we got the S minus A, the region of convergence. Take the denominator and A greater, keep that is a greater than the zero. The S is greater than A. This we can call it as a region of convergence, ROC. A region of convergence, my dear students. For S is less than A, we got this S is greater than A. For S is less than A, the Laplace transform cannot be calculated since the integral is unbounded. For S is less than A, the Laplace transform cannot be calculated since the integral is unbounded. Therefore, the region of convergence is the region of convergence is S is greater than A greater than a means exists simply we can say for s is greater than a values the region of convergence is exists the shaded area shows the roc see this is s plane having the is s plane with the real axis is a sigma and imaginary axis is a j omega we can call it as a s plane the four quadrants in that four quadrants, so zero is origin, and I'm taking is a s is equal to a. So because it's a greater value, a it is a. a above the a value, the total is a region of convergence. The shaded area what we have here, a above the a. Because therefore the region of convergence is s is greater than a. The shaded area shows the ROC. This is ROC. ROC is s is greater than a region of convergence. Thus, the Laplace transformation varies. E power a t mu of t, the Laplace transformation is 1 by s minus a and the region of convergence is s is greater than a. s is greater than a. One-sided. It is a one-sided, that to positive-sided. Positive-sided. Remember here. Well, why we are what the greater than means here the mu of t is in the positive sided minus points. If this mu of t is changes to the negative sided, then the shaded area will get in the left hand side. 
Uh, we got the shaded area in the right hand side. The region of convergence is above the value of S is greater than A, not equal to actually, it's S is greater than A. Above the A values, for all the values of above the A, it is exits. Exits. Okay. Exists. Region of convergence. Remember that. It is very, very, very important you have to remember without the region of convergence, we can't apply to find the inverse Laplace transformation. Laplace transformation we got. They given they find the inverse Laplace transformation by giving the region of convergence only. So without the region of convergence, we can't say for 1 by S minus A, what is the inverse Laplace transformation? Because 1 by S minus A will get the two for the two functions. E power AT mu of T will get the 1 by S minus A and E power AT mu of minus T minus 1 also 1 by S minus. So there is ambiguity we will get. So without ROC, we can't say which is the inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by S minus. Okay, so definitely you have to know which is the shaded area and which values there is exists. Got it. So coming to the second example, you can see for the second example, find the Laplace transformation of the step function. The step function, the Laplace transformation. So minus infinity to infinity according to the definition, x of s, the integral minus infinity to infinity uh, x of t e power minus s t d. So what is the x of t step function? So integral minus infinity infinity mu of t e power minus s t d. What is the mu of t? The value is 1 from 0 to infinite only. So e power minus s t d. That is equal to apply the integral e power minus s t by minus s. Upper limit is infinite and lower limit is a 0. By substituting the upper limit, the value is a 0. Substituting the lower limit, the value is a minus 1 and minus s. So minus and minus get cancelled, you get the 1 by s. So the Laplace transformation of uh, the mu of t is equal to 1 by s. Put it. So mu of t is equal to the Laplace transformation is 1 by s minus 2. So these are all the bits all. You have to remember that one. What is the Laplace transformation of e power a t mu of t 1 by s minus c? You'll get the asking in the online. These are the bits, some of the bits. By using the definition of the Laplace transformation, you have to derive or you have to solve the e power a t mu of t. What is the Laplace transformation? And what is the mu of t? The 1 by s. Next one. <clears throat> Third example. Find out the Laplace transformation of the ramp function. Ramp is nothing but R of t. R of t is equal to t. R of t is equal to t. The t is greater than or equal to 0. Ramp is nothing but the linear function. Linearly. So as the t is increases, R of t is also increases linearly. Therefore, the R of T is equal to the T for T is greater than or equal to 0 up to the infinite. Okay. Now, you can find the Laplace transformation of the ramp function or the linear signal. Simply, you can say linearly. Now, this is from the t into mu of t because the t into mu of t it varies from the 0 to infinity. We want the definition of the Laplace transformation x of s is equal to x of s is equal to integral minus infinite to infinite x of t e power minus s t dt and that is equal to integral minus infinite to infinite. Now I'm taking the x of t as a ramp function. So t into mu of t, why it is multiplied with the mu of t? Because it is varies from the 0 to infinite. What it matters, friends? 
e power minus is t dt. V of t is changes the limitations here, the zero to infinite. T into e power minus is t dt. Now again, by using the biparts, integration biparts, the t into, apply the integral for this one, e power minus is t by minus is minus, again the integral, take the derivative of t, one, apply the integral for this one, e power minus is t by minus is into dt, and the limitations is from the zero to infinite. Again, that is a t, e power minus is t by minus is, apply that, again the integral of e power minus is t. So you have the minus into minus is a plus, e power minus is t by, for this e minus s again, we'll get the s into s is a s square minus s square. So this minus will get here itself. Got it minus terms for the minus. So apply the limitations of the infinite and zero. First of all, if I am applying the infinite, e power infinite is a zero and e power infinite is a zero. First two terms becomes a zero. And uh, Lower term you can apply the first term is a zero because it's a t and the last term what we have here e power minus s into t that t value is a zero one and in the denominator that we have s square because we are substituting the lower limit there is a minus we'll get and here also minus both are it is a plus once again i will explain first of all if i'm applying the infinite the t into e power minus infinite by minus s plus e power minus infinite by minus s square for the infinite. For lower limit, minus of, and here it is a minus is there. Now the plus t is a zero, zero into e power minus zero by s. And here also the minus is there. For lower limit, minus will get plus e power minus zero by s square. So e power infinite is a zero and e power infinite is zero, zero into anything is a zero and e power zero is a one, one by s square. See the Laplace transformation of the ramp function, the t into mu of t is a one by s square. For step function is the Laplace transformation, mu of t, Laplace transformation is 1 by s t into mu of t laplace transformation is 1 by s square suppose here that 1 is there the t into mu of t the t square by 2 mu of t it becomes of the laplace transformation is 1 by s cube and t cube this is a factorial model students one factorial will get t cube by 3 factorial, nothing but the 6. Mu of t, the Laplace transformation is 1 by s power 4 and so on. Got it. So, the nth derivative, the nth value it is a t power, here the 3 plus 1, that is a 3 here and the 6. So, it means the t power n by the n factorial with the mu of t. What is the Laplace transformation by observing this? The t into one factorial, t square by two factorial and t three, three factorial and so on, one by, here the t is t power one, s square is one by s square n plus one. So here the n value is there, that is added with one, one Three. We can take the three, three plus one. So t power n factor, t power n by n factor mu of t, the Laplace transformation is one by s power n plus one. Okay, generic. If the slope of the ramp is k, then it is given as f of t is equal to k into r of t or the k into t. The Laplace transformation of the function will be k into r of t is a k by s square. Simply we can multiply the k here because amplitude is there. R of t is nothing but k into t mu of t. We know the t into mu of t is a one by s square. 
and k is multiplied, we'll get that k by s square. What it? And if it is a shifted delay function, r of t minus t naught is equal to t minus t naught. And R of T minus T naught Laplace transformation is E power minus S into T naught. This is about the definition of, a, not the definition, one of the property, shifting property, time shift property. Multiply this one, E power minus S into T naught by S square. If K into is there, K into E power minus S into T naught by S square. What it? Any confusion, my dear students, here, but there is any confusion, see it x of t minus t naught Laplace transformation is e power minus s into t naught x of s. What is the x here? The ramp r of t minus t naught. The Laplace transformation is e power minus s into t naught. For x of t, the Laplace transformation is x of s. For R of T, the Laplace transformation is by S square. Something, same. The R of T minus T naught, the Laplace transformation is E power minus S T naught by S square. Got it. If it is a K is multiplied, you get the K into E power minus S T naught by S square. We got uh, another formula, the Laplace transformation of the ramp function. 1 by s square, the Laplace transformation of step function 1 by s. Okay, the Laplace transformation of a delayed version of the ramp function e power minus s into t naught by s square. The Laplace transformation of e power at mu of t 1 by s minus e. Okay, now the fifth proper, fifth example, example. Another example, find out the Laplace transformation of sine wave. The sine wave is given as A into sine omega naught t. <coughs> we know the sine omega naught t in terms of exponential 1 by 2j e power j omega naught t minus e power minus j omega naught t. What my students? Assuming that it is f of t. So f of t is equal to a by 2j e power j omega naught t minus e power minus j omega naught t. Substitute the Laplace transformation in this. The Laplace transformation of e power j omega naught t minus the Laplace transformation of e power minus j omega naught t. We know the Laplace transformation of e power a t. a t is 1 by s minus e. Instead of a, here the j omega naught. j omega naught. The first one you can see. First one, the Laplace transformation of f of t is equal to using this property, using this Laplace transformation, that is a by 2j will multiply for this uh, e power j omega naught t, a as j omega naught. So 1 by s minus j omega naught minus, here what is a e power minus j omega naught? 1 by s minus of minus j omega. Okay, a value is that is equal. Simply we can say the Laplace transformation of e power minus a t mu of t. Laplace transformation is 1 by s plus a my dear students. So remember this one. I used here it's one. So a by 2j a by 2j it is s plus and s minus so s plus j omega naught minus s minus j omega naught. it becomes of j omega whole divided by a plus b into a minus b s square minus j omega naught whole square now s and s get cancelled j omega naught and j omega naught is at 2j omega naught 2j 2j is also get cancelled here in the denominator, we have only the omega naught. So, a into omega naught whole divided by j square, we know the minus s square plus omega naught square. So, sin omega naught t, a into sin omega naught t, the Laplace transformation is a 
into omega naught by s square plus omega naught square. Remember this one. A into sine omega naught by the Laplace transformation is A into omega naught by s square plus omega naught square. Got it. In similar fashion, the cos omega naught t also. What is the formula for the cos omega naught t? Get the plus. Plus. And here also the plus. Here also the plus. Now simplify with the plus. Plus. J omega naught and J omega naught get cancelled. 2 years will get. 2 to get cancelled. And it becomes of a, There is no any J in the denominator also. What is a... Laplace transformation of A into cos omega naught t now by changing only the plus here. Laplace transformation. Whenever you are using the plus, 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 plus here, it is also plus. After simplification, it is a plus. 2s in the denominator, numerator. And j omega naught and j omega naught get cancelled. There is no any j in the formula of a cos e power j omega naught t plus e power minus j omega naught t by 2 only. 2 to get cancelled. It becomes of A into denominator numerator is a S by denominator is the same. S square plus omega naught square. A into cos omega naught is A into S by the S square plus omega naught square. Only simple remember here. Cos will get numerator is a S. Sin will get numerator is a constant. Omega naught is a constant. Variable is a function is a yes. Got it. Okay. The Laplace transformation of sine function and the Laplace transformation of cosine function also. Cosine function is numerator is a yes, denominator is as usual, both are the same. Got it. So the Laplace transformation of A into omega naught by S square plus omega naught square. Similarly, t e power minus ct cos omega naught t. Is a uh, another way. another one. It is not the same, but it is a multiplied with e power minus ut, not the a. A into cos omega naught t is a into s by s square plus omega naught square. But e power minus ut into cos omega naught is a different matter. Space. Okay, that we'll discuss in the next class. So any doubts? Any doubts, my dear students? Okay, thank you.